Hello guys, so today we are talking the cautious choice inequality in its basic, regular, classic form and its angle form, which United States citizens might call Tiosama, I guess, or something like this. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. You are in the perfect place to learn some competitive maths and uh, get started. Okay, guys, okay, so we would like to prove the cautious words inequality. So it states that if we have some two sequences of positive real numbers, so I denoted them ai and bi, we have that the sum of a1 squared plus a2 squared, and we are adding itself up to a n squared, then we take that sum and we multiply by another sum of b1 squared plus b2 squared, and we are adding itself up to b n squared, is going to be great and equal to a i times b uh, a one times b one plus a two times b two, and we're adding stuff to get it up to a n times b n, and then we take this entire expression and square it right over here. So, I would like to give you guys the honestly the best, <laughs> in my opinion, the proof that is I mean the finest one, I mean the the nicest the uh, nicest looking one. So first of all, let's define ourselves a function f of x. And I would like f of x to be equal to this sum, a1 multiplied by x, then we subtract b1, then we square the entire thing. Then we add ourselves a2 times x, we subtract b2, and we square the entire thing. Then we go on and do the same, the same thing until we get to a n times x minus bn and then we square the entire thing once again lovely so this is a function actually we can rewrite this using sigma notation as the sum from well i equal to 1 up to n of ai times x minus bi and now we just have to square the entire expression right here lovely so well actually we can expand this thing out we're gonna get uh, something like this, x squared multiplied by this sum from a i equal to 1, not a equal to 1, but i equal to 1, up to n of a i squared minus x multiplied by the sum from 1 up to n of, well, 2 times a i b i, and then plus uh, this sum from 1 up to n of b i squared. Lovely. So let's maybe think about for what values of x does this function equal to zero? Yeah, we would like to find such an x that f of x is equal to zero. Well, if I want f of x to be equal to zero, then each and every one of those terms would have to be equal to zero. Yeah? And if each and every one of those things will be, have to be equal to zero. Well, then we have that a1 times x minus b1 is equal to zero. We have that a2 times x minus b2 is equal to zero. We actually have that up to an, so an times x minus bn is equal to zero. That wasn't supposed to be an e, it was supposed to be a zero, yeah? Lovely. So what this actually gives us, in conclusion, is that x have to be equal to, well, a1 over b1, uh, sorry, b1 over a1, yeah, b1 over a1, well, it would also have to be equal to b2 over a2, b2 over a2, well, actually, it would have to be equal to, well, bi over ai up to bn over an. Well, Okay, so you see, actually, that we have only one solution here. And, well, we don't really have to have this solution. We know that this, um, that this function yeah, has only one particular value of x where f of x is equal to zero. And what actually does it tell us? Well, this tells us, because well, f of x is just a quadratic equation, that the discriminant which we denote as delta, of 
f of x, which is equal to, I mean, I will say it in just a second, is going to be less than or equal to 0. Yeah? But what is delta for f of x? Well, actually, I would like no, this stuff to maybe make a little bit more sense. So I will say that this sum of all squares of ai's is going to be equal to some kind of a capital A. This negative sum from 1 up to n of 2 times ai times bi, I'm going to denote it as b, capital B. Well, and this, uh, how do you say it in English? This lonely, this lonely term flying out, I will call this c. So, you see, actually, we have that the discriminant, which is equal to, well, b squared minus 4 times capital A times capital C is less than or equal to 0. And so, well, this means that b squared is less than or equal to 4ac. But what is b squared? What is 4ac? Well, actually, let me move a little bit further here. Well, b squared is what? This is negative sum from 1 up to n of 2 times a i times b i squared. And so we have four sums yeah, of, uh, from 1 up to n from a i b i expression squared. I don't really care about this negative sign here because we're, we're squaring this entire stuff. And what about 4 times a times c? Well, 4 times a is 4 times the sum of squares of all ai's, 4 times the sum from i equal to 1 up to n from ai of ai squared. Then you multiply it by a c, but c, uh, whoa, this is the sum of all of the squares, of, um, I mean, of squares of all of the terms of bi. And so we'll get that this multiplied by the sum from i equal to 1 up to n of bi squared. And actually, after dividing both sides by 4, which we absolutely can do, because it's not negative, <laughs> as far as I know, maybe I should check it, and no, we end up with, well, exactly the thing we were supposed to prove, because we're expanding this thing out, we will just get, this is b1, and we are adding this up to bn, and we square every single one of those terms. What about this one? Well, this is just the same thing, but this time in terms of ai's. And what is this stuff? Well, this, maybe I will write it a little bit lower. This is just a1 times b1, and we are multiplying stuff up to a n times b n, everything not to the nth power, but squared. And guys, this is exactly the thing we were supposed to prove. So the Cauchy Schwartz inequality, well, honestly, I, I just love this proof. So this is proved, lovely. Now let's move to the proof of the angles form. Titus lemma. No, no, depends on whether you're, Amer you're from America or not. Same thing. <laughs> okay, guys, so let's move on to the second proof of the Titus lemma or Cauchy-Schwarz inequality in angle form. Well, it's gonna look something like this. So, by the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality, we know that for some sequences, maybe let's call them x, um, x i's and y i's. So we have the sum of x one squared, and we're adding stuff up up to x n squared, and then we just go and multiply this entire sum by the sum of y one squared, and we're summing stuff up to y n squared. So it'll be great and equal to. Well, x1 times y1, and we're adding stuff up to xn times y, and, and we're squaring the entire sum, yeah? So I would like you now, guys, to ponder what would happen if I set x i's equal to a i's divided by the square root of b i's, and y i's equal to the square root of b i's. Well then, this entire expression right here will become something like this. So it'll become, hmm, a i squared over b i, yeah, plus and we are, oh sorry, b one squared of the b one up to a n squared of the b n, and then we multiply this by what? Well, by just b one plus 
and we're adding stuff up to BN. And this part is a little bit too little. Yeah? And so we're going to go to two, what? Well, AI over square root of BI times the square root of BI is just AI. And so we have just the square root of, uh, square root of the second power, the square of the sum of all the AIs, yeah? But now actually, wait, guys, it's exactly this stuff right here, but kind of multiplied both sides by the sum of all the BIs. So, no, let's just go on, divide both sides of the inequality by the sum of all the BIs. It's not zero, it can't really be zero, I mean, we got it. They are all, <laughs> they are all positive real numbers, and this expression makes sense, so. Anyway, here we get, I don't really have to put these parentheses here, a1 squared, and we are adding stuff up to an squared all over b, and it's great, I'll go to, well, the square of the sum of all of those a's, divided by the sum of all the b's, which is, ladies and gentlemen, exactly something we wanted to prove, and I call this a statement proven twice. Beautifully. Let's move to some problems. Okay, guys, so the first problem we're gonna be solving is, well, the thing I kind of promised you couple of videos ago, so the proof of few MAM inequality finding in this channel. So, we are supposed to prove that when xi's are positive reals, we get the following inequality, such that the square root of the sum of squares of those numbers divided by n, which is, well, the quadratic mean, so-called quadratic mean, is greater or equal to the arithmetic mean, so the sum divided by the quantity on. Lovely. Well, Hmm, how can we do it? Well, let's first of all maybe just quickly rewrite this here a little bit no, below the statement I wrote there. Yeah, so we get the quadratic mean of those numbers. Well, it's not perfectly straight, but who cares, guys? Uh, and it's going to be greater than or equal to the arithmetic mean of those numbers. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to do here is maybe get rid of the square root. So I will just go on and well, square both sides out. So I will get x1 squared and I will be adding everything up to xn squared. Then I will divide everything by n. It's going to be great and equal to, well, what? The square of the arithmetic mean of those n numbers. Yeah, but now it will be kind of nice to just go on and uh, get rid of those n in, n's in those denominators. So I will go on and do this. I will multiply both sides of the inequality by n squared, getting, well, n multiplied by x1 squared, and I'm just gonna, uh, I'm just gonna write the sum of squares of xi's, let me grade or equal to, well, x1, and we are adding this up to xn, and this entire expression is squared. Lovely, but now there's one nice thing. How can we actually write this little n right here? Well, I would opt for maybe writing this, it as, well, 1 plus 1 plus 1, and I will be just adding 1 n times, n times. And why, 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 bro? Look at this stuff. I will write it as 1 squared plus, and I will just n times at 1 squared. Well, 1 squared is just 1, and then I'm going to multiply it by x1 squared up to xn squared. Well, now, I'm not writing this 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 thing right here. Oh, I'm not quite covering with my hands, am I? Yeah, okay, so I'm not rewriting it. Now I'm recalling the cauchy schwarz inequality, which said what? Well, we have a i's and we have b i's positive real numbers. And what do we get there? Well, a i a1 squared, and we're adding stuff up to a n squared, b1 squared, we are adding stuff up to b n squared, so it'll be great and equal to what? Well, a1, b1, up to a n, b n, everything squared. No idea why I wrote this down one more time. You, like you 
<laughs> like you uh, f forgot it after like h how much? Three minutes and thirty-one seconds from the f uh, previous uh, previous problem. Anyway, well, now that's my thing. Well, ones are just well, positive real numbers. Those xi's are also positive real numbers, so we can say it's gonna be greater or equal to what? Well, x one times one, x one times one plus and we are adding stuff up to x n times one, everything squared. But this is just what well, this stuff right here. This is just x1 up to x and everything squared and this ladies and gentlemen whew, is the proof of QMA completed hope you liked it let's move on okay guys so one more problem this time we are given three real positive numbers I mean they also can be a zero so positive real numbers but also maybe a zero, x, y, and z, and we're supposed to prove that the square root of 3x squared plus x times y plus the square root of 3 times y squared plus y times z plus the square root of 3 times z squared plus z times x is less than equal to 2 times x plus y plus z. Whew. Well, that was a mouthful. Anyway, how are we supposed to do it? Well, you see, we could actually try and use the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality here because, well, you know, let me waste a little bit of your time and rewrite this expression one more, uh, one more time. So we've got the uh, square root of 3x squared plus xy plus the square root of 3y squared plus yz plus the square root of 3z squared plus zx. Beautifully. And so, right now, we can actually go on and use Cauchy Schwarz. How? Well, Notice that if we go on and square this entire expression, it's going to be less than or equal to what? It's going to be less than or equal to... Well... <clears throat> see, how can we actually make those terms some kind of a product? Well, this, for example, is the square root of x multiplied by the square root of 3x plus y. Yeah? This is the square root of y multiplied by the square root of, the square root of 3 y plus z. This is the square root of z multiplied by the square root of well, 3z plus x. Yeah? Okay, so this actually can be rewritten as, let me erase it because it looks absolutely awful. Yeah, well. So we can rewrite it as, well, the square root of x squared, so well, actually an x, the square root of y squared plus the square root of z squared multiplied by what? Well, the square root of 3x uh, 3x plus y squared plus the square root of 3y plus z squared plus the square root of 3z plus x squared, yeah? But now Actually, well, what is this stuff right here uh, equal to? Well, this is actually just x plus y plus z times, well, here we're gonna get 3 times x, and here we have another x. The same thing happens to, well, actually all three of those variables. So we're gonna get just 4 times x plus 4 times y plus 4 times z. It's gonna be equal to 4 times x plus y plus z squared. But now we can just go on and take the square root of both sides of this inequality and what are we gonna get? Well, we're gonna get that... No, not gonna be rewriting this one more time. We're gonna get that... Look at this carefully. It's going to die. Yeah. It's gonna be less than or equal to 4 times x plus y plus z squared, but now go, taking the square root of both sides of this inequality, we're gonna get that this stuff is gonna be less than or equal to 2, so the 4 is 2 times the square root of x plus y plus z squared, so x plus y plus z, and guys, this is exactly what we were supposed to prove. Let's move forward.
Okay guys, so this is gonna be kind of quick because well, we have A, B, C and D given as positive real numbers. We have that the sum is equal to one. I have no idea why I'm Italian so much in this video. Okay, and we're supposed to minimize one over A plus one over B plus one over C plus one over D. What does it mean to minimize something? Well, it means to find such a value that is the least value it could possibly be equal to. And so we are trying to find such a K so that 1 over a plus 1 over b plus 1 over c plus 1 over d is greater than or equal to k always. Yeah? But we can actually go on and use the cautious schwartz inequality here. And what is this? So because, well, 1 is just 1 squared. So we're going to rewrite this, in, this expression something like this. And now after erasing this, um, erasing this k, I have no idea what I put so much stress on that either. So after erasing this k, we got... Uh, something like this, which we can use the cauchy schwarz inequality in angle form on, getting, well, 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1, everything squared, and everything by a plus b plus c plus d. Well, this is just 4 squared, so it's 16, this is 1, so we get that the least value uh, this equation can get is 16. Whew. Oh my god, guys, yeah. That one was quick. But yeah, let's move forward. Okay, guys, so the last problem is as follows. We're supposed to prove that for all positive real numbers A, B, and C, such that the product is equal to 1, we get that the reciprocal of A cubed plus the sum of B and C plus the reciprocal of B cubed times the sum of C and A plus the reciprocal of C cubed plus times the sum, I knew I was gonna do some kind of a mistake, times the sum of A and B is always great and equal to 3 halves. Okay, so how are we supposed to deal with this problem? Well, you see, I would absolutely love to use the cauchy schwarz inequality here, and why? Well, you see, we got some kind of fractions, yeah, and those fractions are not really nice, and we're supposed to prove that those fractions are great and equal to something that maybe using the angle form of cauchy schwarz inequality will give us something. However, the problem is that using it directly right now, will only give us that, you know, 9 over some absolutely awful sum is supposed to be greater than equal to 3 over 2. And that's not really gonna give us anything. However, I would like to introduce a nice trick, because, well, I would love the, uh, you know, the denominator of the big fraction that will appear on the board after applying the cauchy schwarz inequality to the sum to be as... Um, uh, as simple as it's possibly possible. As possible, I would, I would do as simple as possible, yeah? And so how can I do it? Well, I would like to introduce a kind of a neat substitution here. Because, well, A, B, C are equal to one, yeah? Okay, lovely. Now if I substitute, for example, that one uh, A is equal to one over X, that B is equal to one over some kind of a Y, and that uh, C is equal to one over some kind of a Z. Why this substitution? Why not something different? Well, because, well, ha here I have division. But maybe this A, this B, and this C that I'm multiplying those sums uh, by in those denominators will decide to peacefully travel to the numerators and then maybe I will have, um, you know, a little less mess in the denominators. Hopefully, no idea, it's just intuition, let's check it, yeah? So, for example, Let's take a look at the first term. So 1 over a cubed times b plus c. Well, after uh, this substitution, oh, what's going to give us? Well, it's going to give us 1 over 1 over x cubed multiplied by, well, 1 over y plus 1 over z. Yeah, lovely, but actually I can bring those two to a common denominator here, in this sum right here. I'm gonna get 1 over 1 over x cubed, and here I'm gonna get z plus a y all over the, pr the product of y and z. And the nice thing is that, well, if a, b, and c is equal to 1, well, then 1 over a times b times c also is equal to 1, and so x times y times z also is equal to 1. And so I can say that this is actually 
this stuff right here is actually x is 1 over x. And so I can just go on and simply uh, multiply everything out. Yeah, I can bring this x to the numerator. I will get x cubed all over z plus y all over x. Now I can just uh, go on and divide it out. And this I'm going to be left with x over z plus y. And actually I can do it with every single one of those terms. And what I'm going to be left with is, let me erase it and I will uh, show it to you in just a few seconds. So I'm going to be left with something like this x over z plus y. Yeah, x squared, I'm sorry, x squared, I should have write x squared right here. x squared over z plus y, plus, well, y squared, y squared over z plus x, and plus z squared over y plus x. Yeah? And now you can see that applying the cautious choice inequality in angle form will be well, absolutely lovely, because we're going to get in the numerator, x plus y plus z to the power of 2. And in the denominator, what are we going to get? Well, those numerators are absolutely lovely because it's going to add to just 2 times x plus y plus z. And so cancelling those two off, we're going to get x plus y plus z all over 2. And let me pump my marker a little bit. Yeah, lovely. But now, you know, I would like it to be greater than or equal to 3 over 2. How do I achieve it? Well, notice one last thing. Actually, x plus y plus z by the AMG inequality over 3, so the arithmetic mean, is going to be greater than or equal to the cube root of the product, which is equal to 1, so because well, it's just cube root of 1. And so what I'm getting here is it actually x plus y plus z, x plus y plus z is greater than or equal to, oh, it's not 3 over, 4 over 2, but 3. And so x plus y plus z over 2 is going to be greater than or equal to 3 over 4. And just a side note here, because, oh, I, I had this somewhere written. This is actually a problem from 1995 International International Mathematical Olympiad, just if you're interested in that. We'll see, IMO is not there. <laughs> Isn't that scary? Okay, lovely. So, hope you liked it. <sighs> yeah. That's it, I guess. Okay, guys, so that will be all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you found some value in this video. If you did, I'm happy. You're happy. Women, lovely. Anyway, let's see you. Oh. Just see you in the next video.